How's it going there, folks? Welcome back here to a Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster here, May 25th, 2024. It's about 1041 p.m. here at California time. Uh, latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D globe. Looks like some movement in South America with a 3.4 in the green flag. And also some activity stirring up here. Once again into the deeper regions of the Tonga Trench. Now, we did see a fairly large earthquake earlier here around the Port Villa Vanuatu region. 6.3 originally coming in as a 6.5. Pretty decent sized quake out here. Uh, it does look like things are remaining quite active across this plate boundary with renewed deep activity here across this region. We've seen a swarm of deep activity here in this region recently and it looks like it's continuing even following uh, this earthquake. So, uh, let's take a look here and see what we've had so far this year in terms of earthquakes 6.0 and above, 6.0 and above. Uh, of course, there's today's earthquake, the 6.3 in the Vanuatu area. Prior to that, uh, we did have a six-pointer in Alaska. Quite a few sixes if you go back here throughout the months. As uh, far as the largest magnitude so far in 2024, it's a 7.5. Um, they're... I put this at January 1st, but it still looks like they want to count that into the new year. But uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and go with that. Aside from that, uh, 7.4 back in uh, April. Uh, no 8s yet. They are common, um, you know, on occasion here. Uh, we should probably at least see one 8 um, before the year's out. It's been a while since we've had a 9-pointer as well. 9-pointers uh, don't come in as often. Uh, our last nine pointer, I believe, was up here in the uh, Japan area, uh, 2011. So it's been well over 10 years. We're looking at, uh, you know, 20 or uh, 20 something years, about 13 years or so since the uh, big one out here. So we could be coming up on it. Uh, certain areas that haven't been hit yet, and ones that have seen a lot of activity around it, is the New Zealand area. A lot of movement up and down here recently, but really nothing of sizable magnitude here across the New Zealand area. So we have to watch that region pretty closely. Uh, up here along the Kurokamachaka as well, we've seen a tremendous amount of deep activity here uh, in the region recently with no major surface adjustment going on here, at least according to the USGS. So things quite active over here in the crunch zone. Let's get back to the uh, latest map here. Southern California showing some activity here today, but uh, really not a whole lot. No major swarming, just a handful of smaller quakes up and down the plate boundary here. Southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, the Bay Area, pretty quiet. Northern California as well. And as you can see throughout the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West regions, uh, just some general small microquake activity out here. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, Yellowstone stations here at the Super Volcano in Wyoming and see what they have if there's any swarms going on uh, a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up here in the last few hours that's all that spiky activity here on the graph looks like that's centered around the maple creek area really nothing major going on here just uh again a little bit of earthquake activity here in the last few hours the rest of the country aside from oklahoma and texas or uh, mainly texas here today Got Oklahoma on my mind because a lot of tornado activity out here tonight. Pretty crazy, large, damaging, destructive tornadoes out there. Uh, we'll cover the weather here in just a little bit. Puerto Rico still seeing some movement down here, a little swarming going on. Northeast of the San Juan area. Uh, now this earthquake activity, threes and fours. The last one was this morning. It looks like a 3.4. Newer activity, it looks like underneath the Puerto Rico area with a 2.6. And uh, there's the South America activity stirring up along the Peru Chile Trench. Mostly deep activity. Seen a lot of deeper activity here in the subduction zones recently. Uh, with this type of activity here, look at New Zealand. New Zealand does have some, uh, some deeper activity once again underneath it, but really nothing of any sizable events. Lots of threes down at the deeper region. This could be leading to something bigger upstream, so we'll have to watch that. Uh, but with this activity, the deeper movement quakes now uh, triggering back on the plate boundary here. This might be a, a general region to watch pretty closely for some larger scale movement. Um, just Normally after 6.3, we'd expect to see a little bit of migration of pressure here across the region. 
looks like it's bouncing um, further back east here. Uh, there has been uh, a handful of quake activity out here throughout the afternoon and evening across the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, nothing big, a handful of uh, shallow quakes and some deeper quakes out here. Uh, the Japan area, as you can see, pretty quiet. There's the uh, earthquake way up into the uh, Kuro Kamachaka. That earthquake should be dropping off the map here pretty soon. Well, about 1 o'clock in the morning here in about a couple hours, that earthquake will drop off. As uh, far as the Hawaii area goes, looks like a couple two stirring up out here in the middle of the Pacific. One little oddball quake off the west coast here of the Big Island, 2.4 at 13 kilometers deep. Handful of earthquakes once again stretching out towards the Loihi Seamount. Been like this here over the last couple days. Uh, the latest informational statement here from the Kilauea Volcano, which still remains at a yellow and advisory, states that uh, obviously the volcano is not erupting yet. Uh, unrest beneath the summit in South Caldera in the Upper East Rift Zone has waned, waned over the last week or so. Rates of seismicity and ground deformation have increased but could uh, increase again. So we're, we're looking at you know, obviously some uh, elevated inflation there at the volcano. As we can see here on this deformation chart last week right here across the summit and east rift zone. But we're leveling out. I kind of mentioned that this morning that we should see things start to level out and potentially drop back uh, into a st stationary or deflationary event for a little bit. But uh, I don't know. I think we're going to go up here for another day or two. We'll continue to watch that, though. All right, as uh, far as the rest of the uh, globe here, the rest of the flat scale model Earth, not uh, anything major going on that I can see. A handful of smaller quakes across the Mediterranean. Iceland up here got uh, a little bit of earthquake activity stirring up there with a 2.8. So let's go see what's going on here real quick. Hope everyone's staying safe out there with, this, uh, with that crazy weather out in Oklahoma, Kansas, and Texas tonight. Uh, that 2.8 way over here. Uh, around this volcanic area. Uh, not a whole lot going on here across the uh, Grindavik area or region of concern where all the inflation has taken place. Just, uh, just a time of quietness for right now, but things are obviously well inflated and we'll continue to watch that uh, for some movement in terms of eruptive activity. Get a little bit of flaring out here from this sunspot here, the newer sunspot here on the sun earth facing side of the sun uh nothing big but uh it does look like things may be starting to kick up there from 3691 which uh it's a pretty massive region here it does look like they're getting a little bit more complex uh different colors in here indicating complexity in the magnetic structure of that sunspot uh, so we'll continue to watch that it does look like things are stirring up a little bit there and uh, the rest of these sun so sunspots are going to diminish and uh, probably head off towards the western limb. Back behind the eastern limb here, let's see what we got for the latest far side sun watch. 525, let's see if we got the latest one here. Well, that's, that's going to be the latest one. Uh, there's our sunspot coming off the northeastern limb there that I just mentioned. That's looking a little bit more dynamic. Uh, 3664, our culprit here of the X-Flare activity and the CME and the Aurora event recently, is uh, getting awfully close here to the eastern limb. We'll see it in a couple days or so. Uh, we'll find out if it's still active or if it has decayed. But right now, don't we can't really tell the complexity of the activity out there. But I believe that is the source of a far side eruption here. Uh, a couple days ago, remember it produced a massive full halo CME. I believe that came off of that sunspot. So this one right here will be turning into the view and into the eastern limb here, coming off the eastern limb soon. And uh, we'll get a better look at what's going on there with that sunspot. Overall threat right now, 10% chance for an X flare, M flare at 60, and the C, C flare activity, 99%. No major roars in the forecast, so uh, that's... Let's see if we can't get that to change here. <clears throat> Pretty noisy night over here across the uh, Southern Plains area. Uh, a lot of these storms now working their way into eastern Oklahoma and whatnot. Did see some reports and a lot of damage. Seen the multiple confirmed tornadoes. Uh, today's reports so far from the Storm Prediction Center here 
uh, is showing, obviously, um, oh, hold on a second here, uh, quite a bit of tornado activity here today into the uh, Oklahoma area. Now, these are just confirmed. That's wind. Where's our tornado? T I know we had more than that. This will probably update throughout the night. Uh, one up here outside of Tulsa as well. Um, but there's been there's been way more than that. I know there has. They're only showing about 10. Uh, but we'll check back on that in the morning. Because I've seen uh, some verified tornadoes out there that did quite a bit of damage away from uh, where they're not showing. So we'll check back on that. But as you can see, let's pull up the latest radar imagery. And uh, take a look here at the storms out here tonight. Still got the potential of some severe activity. It looks like things may be dying down slightly, uh, but most of that storm activity working its way east uh, here now, so it's going to be a noisy night. A little bit of storm development back here, way back here. Uh, so we may see some periodic um, thunderstorm development behind this line. So uh, a noisy night, definitely a noisy night. For tomorrow, for the day on Sunday, that sh uh, severe weather will shift much further to the east. A broader view here of an enhanced zone, but that also brings with it the tornado threat as well. So another severe weather day tomorrow, a little bit further east of our region today. That's going to bring some wind and some large hail potential as well. So uh, hopefully these guys can get a break. Let's check out the long-term models here and see what we got. Um, as we put this into motion here. You know, we're just quite active east of the Rockies. A lot of moisture pulling in here. A lot of low pressures uh, tapping into that moisture, stirring up the severe weather. And, you know, it's hard to say. This might here, this low right here may change the pattern a little bit towards the first week of July. But, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to tell. It's that time of year where things are going to get, uh, could potentially remain active. But it does look like here the first week or so of June is not going to have a severe weather threat. At least a severe weather setup out here. This pattern doesn't look typical of a se severe weather. Now there's thunderstorm activity and maybe some, you know, might be some hail with it. But as far as any tornado outbreak activity similar to what we're seeing today and tomorrow, uh, the pattern looks like it changes here roughly uh, the first second day into June. So we'll see how that plays out. All right, uh, what else is there? Anything else going on out here, folks? Um, we'll just kind of keep an eye on things, see how everything uh, goes tonight. A little bit of earthquake activity there on the Hot Caves Station. Aside from that, uh, things are pretty quiet out here, at least in terms of current activity. We'll catch you guys back out here in the morning for the Sunday morning update. Stay safe out there, and if you're out in the uh, severe weather zone uh, tonight or tomorrow, Please stay weather aware and uh, get to safety uh, when these storms pop up. We'll chat, uh, we'll chat you guys sometime in the morning. Take care, folks. Have a beautiful night.